let's start the plan. So, uh, I posted the uh, last lab assignment on the platform. So, actually, the uh, AI is on us in the uh, first class. So, the, you are requested to design high prime architecture, so, which means the high prime software. So, in chapter four, we learned about the architecture of a high prime processor. So, it's the five state high prime processor. So, so, in the last level, assignment, you are requested to design the uh, five state high prime processor using system level. Uh, unlike the uh, unlike the other uh, lab assignment, the deadline of this assignment is a little bit long. So, uh, so which means that so actually you can uh, submit the uh, your uh, result uh, by Monday, so it's December twelfth, so <clears throat> not Friday. Okay, so I. Is we, I give you uh, a additional time for designing a five state pipeline processor. So, actually, so, so remember that this idiom, so, so devil is in the mode. So, actually, uh, as I explained, the main idea, the basic idea of pipeline is very simple, but in order to support the pipeline. Uh, correctly in the project architecture, so we need to consider the uh, many things such as the uh, header detection and then data forwarding. And also, actually, I already I also explained about the exception handling, but you don't need to support the exception handling in this design. Okay, and then actually, this uh, high prime architecture. Is a little bit different from the so five state high prime architecture we learned during the class. So, actually, the difference is that uh, branch instruction. So, in this lab, so we assume that the branch will resolve in, in the EX stage, not the ID stage. So, actually, uh, in, the, in the class, we learned so in order to support the BQ uh, more quickly. So we added the equality check logic uh, on the, at, at the opposite of register file. But so in the in this in, <clears throat> in this lab assignment, I assume that the branch detection unit, so which is, which is called the branch unit, okay, so that it is the branch unit. The branch unit exists in EX stage. It's uh, similar to the uh, five stage pipeline processor, which, uh, which it was uh, shown in the maybe. I introduced the white uh, risk file simulator. Actually, this five stage pipeline processor architecture is similar to the architecture of a uh, five stage pipeline processor by white risk file simulator. Okay? Which means that the branch unit is in the ESC, and then branch unit can receive the folded data, right? So, as you can see, you can find the folding motifs here, and then actually, this branch unit can receive uh, data from the folding motifs. Okay. Uh, so, like the other uh, previous uh, lab assignment, I also provide uh, the skeleton code for the, this pipeline processor. So you can just uh, deal with uh, some missing parts in the system file. Okay? Uh, but in the, in the pipeline processor picture, then you need to design the pipeline register. Okay? So actually, uh, pipeline registers are deeply blocks, okay? And then, but uh, in the system very low, system very low supports the uh, static uh, data structure called stock, okay? Structure. Actually, this is the structure. It's the same to the structure of C or C plus plus. So, which means that we, we can group uh, several variables. Inside of a structure, okay. This is the 
actually this structure is called type structure. So in this example, so you can find that the, the structure is declared uh, the the text structure, and then you can you can find that this is the name of the structure. So as you can see, this structure represents represent the instruction page and ID pipeline register. And then these are the member variables of the pipelining register. So instruction page and then ID uh, pipelining register. So if you see the instruction page and ID pipeline register, then you can find that PC program counter is sampled also the instruction. Instruction is an output from the instruction memory, and then this instruction is also propagated to the next state. So, in this pipeline register, program counter and instruction are propagated to the next state, right? So, which means that these signals are sampled by instruction fetch and ID pipeline register, right? So, as you can see, you can find the member variable here, the PC and the instance. So we can easily implement the this pipeline register using the structure. Okay. So which means that when a clock at the rising end of the clock, these these signals are sampled by clock signal, and then it is delivered to the instruction decoding stage okay uh okay i will show you the some select some code oh. wait a second Uh, okay, this is already. Okay. It's not sure. Uh, okay. Oh, it's too small. Uh, so I should sorry. Okay, okay. I already uh, I already added. So I already added the uh, so example code of the instruction that's in the ID pipeline register so here. So if you see the uh, this example code, then you can find that so this is the always FF, so which means that this is the default flip-flop actually, so it is the sequential logic. So FF means the flip-flop, and then you can find that this the sensitivity in the this always of the FF is the positive edge of the clock and then negative edge of the result. So which means it is sampled by clock signal at the rising edge of the clock. So uh, if the reset signal is uh, zero, so which means that the reset signal is activated, so this is under my B. So output of the instruction patch and then ID pipeline register becomes zero, all zeros. Okay. So as you can see, this uh, pipeline register includes the two member variables. So actually, and then the width of the each variable is 32, which means that it has the 
thirty two bits, and then there are two number variables. So the total number of bits in the uh, in the and the ID pipeline register is sixty four, right? So sixty four. So if the reset is zero, all signals of the pipeline register become zero, all bits. Okay. So all sixty four bits become zeros, and then this this is the control signal. So you have to support the uh, data hazard, right? And then so you have to support the control hazard by taking branch instruction. So which means that the incorrectly fetch instructions need to be flushed them, okay? So this pipeline register also receives control signals, like instruction batch and the flush. So if you see the name of the control signal, then I believe you can estimate the, the purpose, the purpose of the control signal, the corresponding control signal. So, because the this control signal, the name of the this control signal, instruction patch and the flush is the, the name, name of the control signal is the instruction patch in the flush. So which means that instruction patch, the instruction and the program counters in the instruction patch stage are flushed. The cancel them. It is because the branch is taken. Okay. So if the instruction patch under the flush is one, so because this is the if statement and the inside of the if statement, the condition of the if statement becomes one, not zero, then which means it's true, then output all also the all output. All output bits of the this instruction patch and the ID pipeline register becomes become all zeros. Okay. And then if not so, so for the data header case, we also learned that the pipeline can be stored. Okay. So for the load load user header, the instructions are stored in the instruction decoding and instruction batch stages, right? So we also need to support pipeline stores, okay? So this statement explains that instruction batch on the bus store. So which means that it, it is this control signal, signal becomes one, so which means that this instruction batch stage is stored. So as you can see, it's not told. Which, which means the control signal is, if the control signal is zero, then as you can see, ID on the bar is, and then ID on the bar is, is become the current PC and then instruction. So current piece and then instruction is in the instruction batch stage and then if at the rising edge of the clock these signals are propagated to the next stage id stage right that's why the name of the, this pipeline signal becomes the id on the pc and then id on the instance so which means that this is the these are the signals in id stage right you understand? So we can implement the pipeline register like this. Okay, at the rising edge of the clock, clock, signals are propagated to the next stage. Okay. Which means this part. Signals are propagated. And then also the pipeline register can receive Several control signals, like so. so this is the example of the instruction batch and ID uh, pipeline register. So, based on the uh, control signals, we can also decide the 
output of this pipeline register. Okay. So, <clears throat> so using the uh, structure, uh, packed structure type, then we can implement the type finding of the five stage pipeline processor like this. So this is the example. So try to understand how pipeline registers work in the real hardware. Okay. We use the system available for designing a real hardware, right? So, it's, so that's why I provide the design uh, lab assignment. So if you design the real hardware, then you can understand the, how the this pipeline processor or also the single center processor really works in the hardware as the hardware. Okay. And then as I mentioned, the uh, register file of the uh, five stage pipeline processor supports internal coding. Okay. So, so actually, I already I provide the completed register file design. So, which means internal coding is already designed inside of the register file. So, if you compare the register file of the single cycle processor and then the register file of the five state pipeline processor, then you can find that the register file is a little bit different because the register file of the five state pipeline processor supports the internal board, but this internal board and board logic is already implemented. So it's a complete design. So just compare the register file design, and then uh, please figure out how the internal coding works inside of the register file. Okay, so this is the internal coding. Okay, and then actually these are the important parts of the uh, this uh, lab assignment. So you need to design coding unit and hazard detection unit. The five stage pipeline architecture. So, actually, this part is the or this these parts are a little bit a tricky part. Okay, the so folding unit. So, which means that you need to de decide the folding condition. So, we learned about the folding condition, right? With the folding condition. So, actually, so these conditions are uh, same to the, what we learned in the class. So based on the uh, what you learn, so you can you need to design the coding unit. Also, so you need to design the hazard detection unit. Okay. The coding unit uh, generates the coding control signals, so which means that the selection signals for coding MOXIS, and then hazard detection unit uh, generates the um, control signal such as the pipeline flushy or pipeline stall, also the flushy of the old control signals, right? So I also provide the uh, instruction streams. Okay, so this is the assembly post, and then this is the binary data in the instruction memory. So you can also I also provide the help bank file. So if you compile the uh, your design using the very label, and you can run the uh, test bench file using the, this, this command. Okay. okay. So, uh, any questions? So, this actually the five stage pipeline, pipeline architecture design is uh, it's more difficult. It's more difficult than the single cycle process design, right? Actually, it's obvious, obviously difficult. So I, I recommend you also. I recommend you to start early as soon as possible. Okay, and then actually debugging. As I mentioned, the, the basic idea is simple, but this part, the folding unit design and the hazard detection unit design is uh, the a little bit tricky. Okay. Also, you 
So as, as I introduced in the class, uh, you can uh, use the uh, this this life this five simulator to refine your design. Okay, okay. So this is the practical simulator. Uh, I think I think this is a very good tool for under understanding the uh, pipeline of right. You can see the flow of the instructions in each stage, but also the The design of the, this lab assignment is similar to the five stage pipeline design of the life's risk five simulator. <laughs> and I, so as I showed in the class, this simulator has the bulk. This simulator has a bulk. So actually, the behavior is not exactly the same. But you can <coughs> also uh, <coughs> uh, Use the this simulator for very your design. Okay, but just to just to remember that this simulator has a ball in the immediate field handling. Okay, any question regarding the uh, the last level assignment? Also, you if you struggle uh, designing the uh, this lab. Uh, for the this last level assignment, uh, please uh, stop by uh, series of fields. Also, you can also post the uh, questions on the PR chat. Also, you can stop by my office uh, at the appointment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 그대로 하시는 거죠. 네. 근데 그 혹시 저번처럼 10시 반부터 12시 말고 15분 정도 당겨서 해주실 수 있나요? 제가 12시에 또 교양만 해서 시험이 있는데 아... 네, 그 유통시간 15분 정도는 필요할 것 같기도 하시고 선생님한테 물어봐서 15분 정도 있으면 그렇게 12시 듣는 학생 없나요? 그럼 뭐 어쨌든 학생들한테 물어봐야 되겠어. 그래도 시간 조절하는 거는 생각이 좀 있어서. 지금 그런 어디서 하는데? 어디서? 난 어디서 시험 보는? 아, 교양관에서. 교양관. 부담 교양. 아 그래. 뭔가 생각이. 예. 그거는 좀 해볼게요. Okay, so uh, in the previous class, we learned about the uh, memory power. So actually, this is the very important uh, idea in the computer system. So it is because we do not have perfect memory, right? So what is the perfect memory? The capacity is high and the cost is low. And then performance is also high. So which means that the fast memory and the large memory and then cheap memory. So we don't have any perfect memory. So uh, we want to large amount of data in the memory, but this memory is very slow. We want to have a fast memory. <laughs> But the size of the dispatch memory is very, very small. Then, how can we increase the performance of our computer system? So, as you can see, if you see the uh, some programs, you can find that actually many programs load some data from the main memory, and then we these programs uh, execute the arithmetic and logical instruction using the this loaded memory. So, this loaded memory is the Fetch, the fetch, fetch data. So, actually, in a real the for the performance of the control system, this performance of the load instruction is very very critical because for our program, our programs require data to be processed. And then data needs to be the memory. So, 
but we don't have a perfect memory. And then, but fortunately, our programs have low quality. So is our programs exceed the strong low quality. And then I already explained that uh, programs exceed exceed two kinds of low quality data low quality, the temporal low quality and the spatial low quality. So you need to also remember the definition of low quality. This is a very important uh, property or very important characteristics of our application. Okay. So in order to increase the performance, so we already know that our programs exhibit strong quality. So which means that frequently access to them. So if a certain data is frequently requested by our program, then this pro in the near future, I said in the near future, is once the our data is requested, then the same data or neighbor data will be requested in the near future. So these are uh, this explains the low quality of data in our application. So which means that we can store the frequently access to data in the fast memory, but it's small. Okay. So this is the idea of memory hierarchy. And then as you can see, you can find you can find the cache. Okay. So this is actually in the in the last class and in the previous class, I explained the definition of cache. So in the computer computer system, cache is the temporary storage space that allows the fast access. Okay. So in the memory hierarchy, you can find that so the, the top of the memory hierarchy is the register file. But under the, this register file, you can find cache. Okay. So which means, and then also we can find the main memory. The main memory is the DRAM. Okay. So you can find that cache is between the register file and the main memory. So which means that cache is also faster than main memory, but the size of the cache is smaller than the main memory. So which means in the cache, we just store the frequently used data. And then if the data is accessed from the cache, so which means that the request data is found in the cache, then we can use this data very quickly. So we can fetch the data quickly, okay? Okay, so. Actually, in the real life, we already uh, uh, utilized the concept of cache, right? So as you can see, you can find the many books in the bookshelf, okay? And then also you can find the some selected books on the desk. And so you can find the small number, of several books, so three or four books on the desk. So actually we have many books, but that also say you are studying for uh, computer architecture. So which means that we just require computer architecture books, right? But there are many books, many, there are many kinds of books in the world. Okay. So you can find the OS books or the programming books, or you can find you, you may have the other kinds of books. Okay. But for if you are studying the computer architecture for the five reasons, then we just require a, a certain kind of book. So, but Whenever you require a computer architecture group, and then if you just uh, select the, if you just pick pick the book from the bookshelf and then deliver book on the desk, and then if you study so the study the computer architecture using this this book, and then if you return the book 
to the bookshelf, then what is the problem? We consume very, very low. We consume our time for picking up books from the bookshelf and then return the books to the bookshelf. So which means that for the data delivery, so which means that we just pick the book from the bookshelf and then return the book to the bookshelf. So this is kind of a data delivery, I guess kind of a book delivery. So for the data delivery, we need to consume long time. Okay? The many cycles in the computer system. So in order to avoid of this issue, we just to place the book on the desk because we already know that oh. Not to study the computer architecture, then we just require the more number of books. Okay? And then we, we also know that in a specific time period, the, the short term time period, we will just we will just use the smaller number of books, not the all kind of book. Okay, so which means we can just place the frequently used book on the desk. Okay, by doing this, we can save our time. Right? So this is the analogy of cash. Okay, <coughs> cash just stores the frequently accessed data. Okay, then what is required? The problem is that oh, the sign, the first size of cache is small. It's smaller than the main memory. All required data exists in main memory. And the both size of the main memory is very large. It's the same to not this analogy. Bookshelf has many books, but on the desk, the size of the desk is smaller than the bookshelf. So we can just place smaller number of books on our desk. What is the issue? The issue is that because the storage size is small, we, we need to just identify, identify the stored books the smaller storage space. So which means that, oh, there are many books like book number one, two, three, four, five. But in order to access the required books, then we need to identify the required book, okay? Identify. Which means that we need to know the kinds of books. Which means that we need to know the ID, ID of data, which is required for identifying the request data, right? So, so how can we how can we identify required books from the many books? We can just check the book title or in the library, we can just check the um, book number of the library, right? So, what's the problem? In the computer system, in the memory hierarchy, the memory size is very small, uh, very large, but the cache size is small. So, in this small cache space, we need to store the frequently accessible data. So which means that we need first, we need to identify which data exists in the cache, right? So for example, in the memory, memory has the data number 100, but the its cache size is 10. So which means we can just store the 10 default data in the cache. 
for this cache is best does. So which means we need to know which data already exists in the cache. So for example, oh, we require data number five, okay? Then with the, this data number five, we access the cache and then check if the data number five exists in the cache. So, which means this data number is used for identifying the tested data. Okay. So, what is required? In order to store the frequently accessed data in the cache, we need first we need to store data, right? So we need to store the data in the cache. And what is required? We require something that can identify requested data. So which means that in the cache, cache also needs to some information which can identify requested data. Okay. So what, what can be used for identifying data, different data? Address. We can identify different data using different addresses, right? So in the in the real program, like we can identify variables using variable name such as A, B, C, D, the variable name. But in the computer computer system, computer system just identify different data using addresses. Okay. So it means in the memory, this memory is large. So let us assume that this large memory can store address from one to hundred, but the cache size is ten. So it means the cache can have only ten different data. How can you identify? We can just store the address of data, like address number five, and then also we need to store the data, the contents of data inside of the cache. So when the data is requested, like the data address five, then we just check the whole. In the cache, so this data has the address five, address number is five, so we can just compare the, this requested address and then the stored address information in the cache, and then we can know that, oh, cache has the request the data by comparing address, okay? So which means when the data is stored in the cache, the data itself is also stored and we need to store address, not identify data, okay? So this first, the cache has data, the sum of cache has addressing. Okay. So these addresses in the cache is called the tag. Okay. So it's like this. Oh. This is the uh, room number 100. And then in order to ident identify this room number, and if the, this book is cached on the, this table, then we just check the, this book number, okay? And then we can check the, oh, this, the book number 100 is placed on the desk already. Then we can just pick the book, you know, this bunch of books on the, Ask. Okay. So just remember this one. Not store 
small load data inside the cat, we need to store data itself. Also, we need you we need to store the address for identifying the cache data. Okay. So, so this is the memory has the gain. So we can find the cache here. And in the process, of course, so this which is the a five stage pipeline process. So we learn in chapter four. So actually, we learned that uh, in, in the five stage pipeline process, uh, there are instruction memory and data memory. Okay, you can fetch instruction from instruction memory, and then you can send the load instruction or uh, store instruction are uh, executed. Then these instructions access data memory, but Actually, actually, this instruction memory is the error cache, error instruction cache. And then this data memory is the L1 data memory, a uh, data cache. So actually, in the five state pipeline processor, there is an instruction cache in the instruction fetch state and error data cache in the memory state. So which means when the instruction is when the instruction is best, the first clip, the processor request data to the instruct error instruction cache. And then when the load instruction or store instructions are executed, then the processor first sends request to the error data cache. Okay. And in the memory hierarchy, you can find multi-level caches like you can find l1 l2 l3 caches so actually under the is error data instruction cache and then error data cache we can find l2 cache okay but l2 cache is the out of the pipeline processor actually actually you can, you can find that error cache is in the Instruction fetch stage and then error data cache is in the memory stage. But if, if the request data is not found in the error cache or error instruction cache or error data cache, then we need to access L2 cache. Okay. So which means that oh a processor try to fetch a certain instruction from the error instruction cache. Okay, the request is given to the error instruction can but if this instruction the instruction is uh, indexed by store and counter the store and counter is the address of instruction if the request instruction is not found in the error instruction cache then this request is given to the l2 cache and it's the same to thing for the error data cache and our load instruction is uh, executed or, or the store instruction is executed, uh, executed then request is firstly given to the error data cache and then if the request data is not found then this request is given to the l2 cache so uh, then why we use separate the memory so like the instruction memory and data memory but it doesn't mean it means we require separate separated error instruction cache and then error data cache. Then why do we need to separate error data cache and then error instruction cache? In order to avoid structure hazard, right? But in the processor, L2 cache is the unified cache, which means that 
all instructions and then all data are stored in the L2 cache. This is the unified cache. So we separate the instru instruction cache and the data memory in order to avoid structure hazard, but L2 cache is the unified cache. Okay. So I will explain about the multi level cache later. So this is the real real process of this thing. So this actually these are not instruction memory and the data memory actually. These are instruction cache and then data cache. Okay. okay. Then we need to organize the cache memory. So which means that cache is the small memory space. So like the other memory components, cache has limited number of entries. Okay. And then in each entry, we can store data. Okay. So if we when we design the instruction memory, so instruction memory looks like this, right? So instruction memory has the several entries. So uh, uh, actually each entry size is the 32 bit. Okay, this is the instruction memory. So it's a four byte. And then using the address, we can access the target entry of the instruction memory, right? Actually, the, the first the address of the first entry is the zero and then it's one, two, three, like that. Okay. And then just same for the cache. Cache is the memory component, so which means that cache has also multiple entries. And then we can identify these multiple entries using the address. Okay. Then how can we so also the another another issue of the cache is that when the data is fetched, so for example, we just request the data of address one. Okay, when this data is fetched, we need to decide where to store this data. Okay, there are multiple entries in the cache, and then we just that's the a certain data from the main memory. And then and that is the address of the, this memory is the one. Then we need to decide where, where to store this data in the cache. Right. There are multiple entries. So we need to decide the, the, the a certain entry which can be used for storing this data. Okay. And then this is called the mapping in the cache. And then there are several mapping mechanisms in the cache. So actually, uh, when we uh, mention the cache, it actually it's like the, this instruction memory, cache has also the multiple entries. So there are multiple entries, and then each entry of the cache is called a block or a line. And then also cache has the actually the size of the of a block is size of a block vary by Caches. So, which means that uh, we can decide the uh, size of a block. So, what, which means we can this we can set the uh, the size of the block as the sixty four byte or forty two byte or sixteen byte, something like that. So, in the cache we can just configure the different size of blocks. And then 
has includes the multiple blocks because I mentioned that the test has the multiple entries and then actually the single entry is full of log, okay, test block or test line. Then each block has the um, fixed size, okay, like the 64 byte or 32 byte. Also, in order to access a certain block, then each block has the address. Okay, like the, the address of the instruction memory. And then actually in a cache, this address for accessing a certain block is called index. So it, you can think that index is the address for block in the cache. So for example, the first the index of the first block is the zero. And the index of the, the second block is one. The index of the, the third block is two. Okay. Right. It, it's similar to the address of the memory. So you know to access the certain data in the memory, then we need to access this data using the address. So it's the same for the cache. Cache has multiple blocks. And then in order you know, to access the a certain block of the cache, then we need to also know the address of the target block. And then actually this address is called the index, index of the cache. Okay. So this is the index of the cache. So which means we need to decide when the data is stored in the cache, we need to decide which block is used for storing this data. So which means that we need to decide the index of the target block, okay? Then how can we decide? So when the data is fetched from the memory, and then first we need to so we need also deliver the data to the cache. And then as I mentioned that, we need to also know the address of the, this data. So we actually we use this address for identifying stored data in the cache, right? And then this is the example of the cache. As you can see, this cache has the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight entries, so which means eight blocks. And then, so which means the index range of the this cache is the zero to seven, right? right? So these are indexing. And then, uh, And then as you can see in this figure, so you can find, you can know that the size of the memory is larger than the cache. Okay. So, in the this data, like the address 00001 is that's requested by a officer, then we need to decide where to store this fetch data. So which means then we need to decide the index of target cash flow. Okay. So the zero, 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 001. And then this is the, so in this case, we just, we just use the part of data, part of, uh, part of address for deciding target index of the cash. So in this example, the address of this data is the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001, right? And then this is just the rule, it's just the rule. And then in this cache, this cache has the eight blocks. And then which means, so we just use the lower part of the address, like 0, 0, 001 for deciding index of the cache. 
in which means so in, in this example you can find the so we use the the logo to repeat for deciding the index of the target cash flow and zero zero one so which means we can find many data which have the address of zero zero one in the low at the low level of lower three bits of the address like the zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one zero 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 one 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 zero zero one right so which means when the these these data when the these data are requested these data are just stored in the index number zero zero one okay that this kind of cash is for the direct map cash. The direct map cash. So direct cash direct map cash means that in a certain cash step. So actually a cash block that can be that is indexed by a certain cash index is called a set. So actually, it's, it's a little bit tricky, right? So is it because the cache size is smaller than the memory? So actually, the cache has the, the default kind of configura configuration. So which means that a certain index, a single, a single, a, a single set indexed by a certain index number can can be can store many blocks actually. So the default kind of cache, but in, in this example, we assume that uh, cache set has the a single block, so which means that you know this block is indexed by the index, index number of the cache, then only one block is indexed. So one block is indexed. So, so this kind of cache is called the direct net cache. So in the direct net cache, so this lower part of the address becomes the index of the cache, so which means that different location, different the data of the different addresses in the memory are mapped to the same places of Okay. So in this example, uh, the memory has the 32 different data, the 32 block. And so which means the one block of the cache, one block of the direct cache, map into the four different blocks of the main memory. So which means, oh, in the load instruction, we just the data with the address 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Then this data is stored in the index number one of the this cache. Also, load 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so it the address. Then this data is also stored in the, the same index the same location of the cache, okay? So what is the benefit of the, this kind of a cache? So actually, we already know that what part of the address, a part of the address is used for deciding the target index of the cache. So which means, so and then I also explained that in order to identify store, store the data in the cache, we need to store address, okay? So we already know that the part of the address is used for indexes of cache. So which means we don't need to store all address bits of the, this data to identify the stored data. It is because for the index number one, we already know that 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, or 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 11001 can be stored in the this index number 001. So, but there are two different cases. So, which means in order, in order to identify the 
four different cases, you can just store the upper part, upper part of the this address, which means in this example, we just use the lower three part of the three bits of the address and the index of the cache. So which means we can just store the upper two bits to identify different data stored in the cache. Okay. You understand? So Actually, in order to identify the different data for this cache, we, we can just store the upper two bits. And then this, these bits are for the tag. So what I want to say is that actually in order to identify the different data stored in the smaller cache, we need to store address, but the index of the cache is also determined by part of address, address bin. So which means that we don't need to store all bits in the all bits of address. We just store the required bits for identifying different data in the cache. And then these bits used for identifying different data in the cache are called cap. Okay. So actually, in the, in the class, I just explained the, some terminologies in the terms of the <coughs> block uh, line. The block and line are the same, the same thing meaning. Also, I explained the index of the cache. So index is the address for the, the cache block. So actually, the index just reference the set of the set of the cache. It is because actually direct map in the direct map, map cache, this cache has the one block per set for different kind of cache such as the two-way set consultation cache or the three of the same cache as the can include the multiple blocks per set. Okay, so in the direct map cache, one set only stores the one cache block. So actually, in order to reference the target set, we use the index of the cache, which is the address of the this set the cache block. So we use the index, and then. So in order to identify the stored data, we define the uh, address, but we don't need to store all address bits because the part of address are used for determining index of the cache set. So we just store the, the remaining bits, remaining address bits to identify different data. So this these bits are called CAD. Okay. CAD. So, this looks like this. So, actually, the data is stored. So, there are multiple sets. Then, in, in this example, in the direct map cache, the uh, only one block is stored per set, okay? And then each set is identified set index. And then also, you know, to identify different data for the target set, the cache also need to store tags, okay? So when the data is stored from the memory, so it's a memory, and then whether source then the load access the data A. Okay. So which means that when the, this data is uh, requested to the its main memory, and then we 
we test this data using the address. Then, when the data is accessed, then data is delivered to the register file, right? So, when this data is requested, then this data is also holding the cache. It is because the cache was the locality. And then we already know that uh, when the accepted data is requested, and this data will be requested again in the near future. So, this is the temporal locality, so which means when the load instruction is uh, Executed and then the data is delivered to the register file from the main memory, and then this data is also stored in the cache. So, which means when the load instruction is executed, then the, the load instruction access the, this data using the address, and then data is delivered to the register file. So, in order to store this data, the data part is stored in the a certain block of the cache. And the location of the block is it's called the index. So we can just calculate the index from the address of the this data. And then part of the so part of addresses are as addresses are used as the index. Then we also need to store the this part. The remaining part of the address. So these parts are stored in the tag. Then this tag is mapped to the, the stored data in the cache. So using the, this tag, we can identify stored data. But cache also requires the additional control bits. Is it because the We need to identify, we need to know the stored data is valid or not. Right. So initially, cache is empty. So, which means that when the, when the computer is turned off, then actually cache is done. That's right. So, it's the volatile memory. All contents, all data of the cache is erased. So, there is no data in the cache initially. So, but which means that the cache is initialized, but the tag has already a certain number, okay? Like zero, 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 zero. So we need to identify all oh, this data is valid or not, okay? Because the tag has, this is the hardware, so we don't know. Actually, how the hardware has, has some state. The zero, 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 zero. So, so we need to know that uh, if this state is valid or not. So which means cache hold also has the control bits for each step, with each block. Okay. So and then actually we require the delete bit to identify the stored data is valid or not. Okay, so cache also has the is control B, okay, like belly. So this is the structure of cache for each entry, so which means for each step, each block has the some space for storing data, and then each block also has the some space for storing tag and control B. Okay, great. So these valid bits are initially zero, which means that the cache does not have any valid data. Okay, cache does not have any data. So initially, cache is empty, and then when the load instruction or store instruction is executed, then the data is transferred between register file and memory. So when the data is transport between the memory and register file, this data is automatically stored in the cache, okay? So this is an example, okay? Oh. So let us assume that this cache has the eight blocks. 
Okay. So you can find the A indexes in the cache, like from index number zero to seven. And then also you can find the validity. The very old validity is up zero, the no, and n means the false. And then which means that actually the, there is no data in the cache. So actually the cache has the some values, but these values are invariable. And then let us assume that the size of a block is the one word, which means four byte. Okay. So initially, cache does not have any data. And so oh, this is the word address, not the byte address. So let us assume that load instruction is executed, just like the load word. So this five, let us assume that is five execute the load word instru instruction. And then this is the word address. Okay. So if you translate the, this word address, word address is the binary address, then it is the one zero one one zero. Okay. So in this case, when the load word is executed, then firstly the processor check the cache. Okay. So and then in this example, the binary address is the 10110, and then we use the, the lower 3 bit, 3 bit as the index of the cache. So we, we need to check the here, index number 110, and then tag is the 10, okay? But when we check the this cache index 110, then it was actually invalid. So which means there is no data. This event is the miss, right? So cache is so the cache is accepted, but the request data is not found. Okay. So this is the miss, and then and the so data is not found, then the data is delivered from the main memory. And then this delivered data is also stored in the cache. Then the tag becomes the one zero, and then it becomes the valid. So which means oh, now the cache has the valid data at index one one zero, and then the data is the one, the data of the Memory address 10110. And then this is the word address. And then if we just translate this word address, word address into the binary, binary address, then you can know that the index is 101. So we access check the index number 101, but it was invalid. So which is also missed. Then so time is stored, and then data is also stored in the cache. Okay. And then let us assume that the CPU also executes the load, different load instruction, but the word address is the 10110 zero, one, one, zero, and then 11101. One, one, one. So in this case, so load word A. So index is the 110. One, zero. So which means we need to check the index number 110 on the cache, then it is valid, right? Because there is a valid data. Then we just check the tag of the this instruction and then tag of the stored data. Okay? Then we already know that oh, the address is the same. So oh, Index so part of the in address we use that the index then we can just check the tag or oh, tag is the same which means this cache has the requested data so data is believed the tag is the same so which means oh tag has the cache has the requested yes. data so which is oh data can be found in the cache so which is the heap. 
this is the same. So you can, so with the index, you can check the index, the overly, or tab is the same, or so data is found in the cache. Tip. So in this case, the processor can access the request data very quickly. Okay. So this is the cache in the example. So, uh, so you can just follow the, the example here, okay? So the miss and the miss, and then it's a hit, the same. And then this is the replace case, cache replace, cache replace, which means that the word address is the one A and then another address is one zero one. So actually in the previous previous state. The so one zero one has the delete data for tag is the eleven, right? So what is what is the problem? When the process access because of this data, the tag is the one zero, which means oh this cache at the index number one zero one, this cache has the delete data, so tag is the one zero. But when the uh, tag is the one one. But when the, this data is requested, the requested data, the tag is the one zero. So which means that different data is requested. So which means this request data is not found in the cache because the tag was one one. So this is the miss. Okay. So miss. So, which means the data is delivered from the memory, and then the data is replaced. Okay. And the means the data is allocated to the target cache block from the memory. Okay. So, this is the example of the cache. Okay. So, uh, sorry, sorry for late. Uh, actually, in this class, I explain about the um, Cache configuration, and then I also explain how the cache work in the with the real scenario. And then I hope you can understand the some terminologies of the cache, like the block, and then what kind of the cache. Okay. Any question? Okay. So thank you for your attention. I see you in the next class. Thumbs up.